Right, if there's anyone outside the uh, library, come on in. We're going to get started because uh, if you've been here before, you you know that we end with a bang, which is we all run down to the patio and get some handmade quesadillas <laughs> and tamales and everything. And uh, it's it's the uh, best part of uh, our open houses. It's a chance for everybody to chat with each other and kind of look where we're going for the next year. So I'm going to get us off and rolling here. Plenty of seats in the first row tour. One of my doctoral students there. It's really Hector, but he likes to tour. And he wants to sit in the front row. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, guy, the guy always has the best t-shirts and hats, so you can all look and afterwards ask him where he gets his <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't come down here, so you had to become a fashion icon. Right? <laughs> well, folks, uh, my name is Chon Noriega, and I'm the director of the Chicano Studies Research Center, and uh, I've been doing it so long that uh, I will actually be stepping down at the end of June, letting a next generation come in. Um, I've been here, this will be my 18th year. It's quite unusual to kind of go that distance. But my goal uh, is, uh, and, and the intention was to help take the center through the centennial, which is also the 50th anniversary of this center, and to hand the baton off to the next person at a full sprint, and then I'll fall asleep for three months. <laughs> Um, I'm really delighted to have you all here. I uh, briefly uh, acknowledge um, uh, Rosalio Munoz here, who was the first Chicano elected as student president at UCLA. See him standing there in the background. And I will say this about him as well. He is probably the most rigorous and conscientious user of our archives. He's here quite regularly. His family is donated uh, their papers here as well, and he is on the hunt. He, he is unraveling the past for us so that we have a clear idea of what, where we were, what happened, and how we go forward. So I want to acknowledge him as one of our community scholars, as well as an alum, uh, and as well as a ground-breaking uh, activist back in the, what was it, the 40s? No. <laughs> 1960s, yes. <laughs> um, before we begin, what I'd like to do is ask uh, uh, my dear friend, and I think uh, one of the best friends uh, the Chicano Studies Research Center has ever had, uh, Lupe Andiano, to come up here with me as we do the land acknowledgement. And I, I ask her up here because she is our elder, um, because uh, if I'm, you know, the, 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 clearly uh, many of us come from uh, an indigenous uh, past, and we hold on to portions of that. But in this case, uh, the goal is to acknowledge those who were here before us in the Los Angeles area. Do you want to read it? Do you want me to read it? And you'll like high five me. <laughs> <laughs> I always improvise, so be careful. Huh? Okay. <laughs> As part of a land grant institution, the Chicago Cities Research Center at UCLA acknowledges our presence on the traditional ancestral and ancestral and acceded territory of the the you pronounce it Gabrielino and Tongva peoples uh, of peoples and also uh, as part of uh, inter interjecting by ancestral uh, the Wichol the Wichol which my my grandfather was a wichol. My dad was a wichol. And uh, I was, uh, his name was Chon, would you believe? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was baptized Ascension. And uh, he served. Uh, I think that many people say 
that La Barca, Jalisco is a sacred place, that there, it is an area where our ancestors are continually uh, coming to, to life in terms of, uh, of spirituality, of history, and of uh, talking about our land. We told us we're a peace-loving people, and we welcome everyone, but we welcomed everyone with goodwill. And if they were not of goodwill, we knew how to handle them. <laughs> uh, and so I carry some of that blood within me on uh, the 14th ancestral day. I'm telling you, I couldn't sleep. I just, the spirits were just all around. And uh, America is a sacred place. And we need to spiritually, intellectually, and work very hard for the unity of peoples of freedom, truth, acknowledge the needs of all humans, and, and uh, to own the land and to have a history of Chicano studies be a perpetual history, history place that contributes our lives, our doings, our work, and our, the way we deal with everyday life. I think that we're being called, all of us are being called to work for unity, for peace, but to, for justice and for ownership of, of the land. And uh, I, I want to thank Joan. Uh, I didn't tell him, but I, a tear came, and I, I thought he was going to live forever. <laughs> and I was getting ready. To, My God. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I was, uh, I was, I'm 91 years of age, and I was getting ready for my, my end of life on the earth. And I was just thinking that he was going to take care of everything for, for, for all of us. So, Chon, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Now you can see why I brought Lupe up here, because I could never have said all of that. <laughs> And I, I want to reassure, we have the Lupe Angenos papers here uh, at the archive. Uh, it's amazing, and it's, uh, the only thing almost as amazing was the two people she brought in when we celebrated, which was Gloria Steinem and Henry Cisneros. And I thought in no other universe would these two people stand on the stage together <laughs> and sing the praises of a third person in the way that they did. We were really honored to have them and to have Lupe's papers here. Uh, they will continue to be taken care of here. We've got great stewards, and certainly uh, I'll drive by every now and then and make sure um, that, that their people have access to them. Um, I do want to acknowledge uh, the best boss I ever had, Claudia Mitchell Kernan, who is uh, in the back here, uh, was the uh, Vice Chancellor of Grads Division and uh, also oversaw the 4th Next Study Centers through some rather turbulent times uh, that only made us better. Uh, so it's, it's a thrill to see her uh, here tonight as well. And I, I couldn't get away from this, you know, it's Darling out there in the hallway. Uh, stick your head in, Darling. Darling. <laughs> okay, stop, don't leave. Uh, I could not go forward without a staff acknowledgement. And so I want to acknowledge all of the staff here and some who are not here uh, for the tremendous work they do above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, they've set a new standard uh, for hard work uh, for getting things done and really helping this center and the campus make an impact in a way that couldn't happen otherwise. Uh, so I want to thank uh, all of you as well. And the thing I really have to do, because Darling gave me two dollars, is to remind you as you go out, we got some books, we've got deep discounts, uh, hold on a second, including and the author is here, uh, Deborah Wright, uh, sitting behind uh, Lupe. Um, Uncompromised, the Lupe Anguiano story, at a discount. And not only that, you can have her sign it here. Uh, 
we need to add a few more pages since it's been published. Uh, Lupe started a, a, as a housing activist and is now an environmentalist. And the last time I brought her up here, up to uh, the podium, of course, she gave everybody the governor's cell phone number and told them, <laughs> told them what to tell them. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of other books. We do a lot of exhibitions. This was one of the most popular exhibitions in the world in 2017. Discount, if you tell uh, Darling I said so, you'll get it at an even deep, deeper discount, $15. Uh, and you're going to want to see it because one of uh, our artists that will be featuring, uh, he will not be coming up to speak, but he wants you to come and speak with him one-on-one, -on -one, two on one maybe even three-on-one. -on -one. But beyond that, he's going to need some help to brought his girlfriend with him. <laughs> this painting here on the left is by him. Uh, it was part of a show to really explore notions of, of home. It's one of the few painters we even considered. He really nailed it uh, in a series of paintings that were done after all these hateful propositions in California to really throw it back through art. And uh, you'll have to talk to him further about that as well. Uh, Rebecca, have I forgotten anything? <laughs> no, I, I think you're... You're good to go. <laughs> okay. If you haven't done it already, uh, uh, you know, after talking to Rosa Leo, look just behind him, and you'll see the interactive display that was from the La Raza exhibition. Spend some time with it. It's a very visceral and visual way to get a sense of what an archive is. The archive is a collection of 25,000 images. That's an abstraction. Playing around with that, we've only got half of them on there, you'll get a sense of just what it means to move through that kind of visual universe and what it can potentially mean for uh, scholarship and, and for teaching going forward to make sure that all the things that didn't happen here in Los Angeles uh, but weren't in the LA Times uh, are understood as part of the history of this region. Now with that, uh, I'm gonna pass the baton to our librarian and archivist, Javiera Flores. She will say a few words about uh, this space and everything that we do, and she will then uh, bring up two folks that are gonna tell you a little bit about the interactive display and about the exhibition we have outside. And then, tamales and quesadillas. <laughs> I'm here to introduce and tell you, uh, introduce kind of parts of the exhibit that we put up this quarter. Every quarter we try to mix it up. Um, so this year we're going, to, or this quarter we're highlighting uh, activists and uh, the main exhibit is called Profiles in Activism. Um, and as part of that, there are these mini sections, mini exhibits, including Ankele Galaceras, um, Shout out to whatever um, doctoral students and our amazing department, uh, Chicano Studies. Um, it's titled Give Us Our Flowers, Latinx Art Divis Portraits. She'll talk more about that. And then um, you can see that we have uh, Solomon Huerta's uh, portrait series of Chicano, Chicana, Chicano, Latino, and Mexican Latino American icons. Um, some of those people who are in this room, as Chan mentioned. And then, um, but first we're gonna have uh, Michael Aguilar come and speak about the La Raza Interactive that's in the back. Um, he was our lead technician on the digitization team for the project, um, which uh, I managed under Chan, and it was a two, three year project. Felt a little longer. <laughs> but 25,000 images, I mean, I mean, I think he can just, almost visualize it as, as people from the movement mention, um, oh yeah, I'm looking for a photo with like that tall guy in the background with the hat, and he's like, oh yeah, that's Fox 4, Folder 5. <laughs> um, so uh, really deep diving, and he can give you a better sense of what's there, and then uh, Kelika's gonna speak, and then food. So um, if Michael can please come up. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, like Aviada said, my name is Michael Aguilar. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator here at CSC, and previously worked as a research assistant on the Lada Collection. Uh, we've 
they mentioned, describe process, um, digitized, research, 25,000 images in three years, which is kind of unheard of. And the cool part was that we got to play a role in developing that interactive machine you'll see in the back. So I'll really be talking about that. I won't get into the collection too much. I could also talk about that for a while. If you want to talk about that, feel free to connect with me afterwards. So we can, yeah, go back and forth. The, um, for those who are, are unfamiliar, the La Raza, La Raza was a bilingual newspaper and magazine that ran during the 60s and 70s. It was a platform to disseminate information to the Chicano community, and it ran upwards of 80 different people who contributed in different ways, upwards of 40 different photographers that documented events across Los Angeles. And they also traveled across the country, across the border, to Cuba. They documented anything that was particular, of particular interest to the, to the to brown lives here in LA. So the photographers, one of their main goals was to create a narrative that contrasted the official police documentation, right? The ones who were creating official records. And at the same time, contrast a narrative that is being created about Chicanos and Latinos in the US at large. Um, and that, that's really the big thing that got me wanting to continue, wanting to continue this work and so invested in it. And give you a sense of my background, I did two masters here at UCLA, one in Latin American Studies, one in Information Science. And uh, I'm very interested in understanding how we engage with the world, how humans engage with the world. And so I use those two to take a real anthropological approach to understanding how we engage in digital environments because all of our engagements are moving that way. So when I had the chance to work on this in particular, how you had mentioned it, it was, you know, I was pretty thrilled to say the least. Um, our role was to prepare all of the content, the, the links, the scripted information, the metadata, anything you see that brings images together. Um, it was a lot of back and forth with our developers at Narduli Studio um, and our, the team that supported us at the Auction Museum. And what we came up with is what you'll see in the back if you have a chance to explore it. It's four unique experience that you, experiences that you can go through. You can do the flyover where these images are coming at you. You can do the spectrum, which identifies which data points show up the most in all of our metadata. Or you can do the, lost the other one, the other thing, <laughs> the timeline, where you can explore the, uh, the interactive literally year by year. But the coolest one is the deep dive, which we refer to as the brain. This one visually demonstrates all the connection between images. But in addition to that, it's also learning. This machine learns. So if one person goes in and, say, clicks on a march, they might be looking at images of that march, but it might be linked to, it might not be linked to another activist. They click on that activist's name, the machine starts learning that, hey, maybe these two things are connected. So with our user's behavior, we're learning more about the past, really. And the next user will be able to learn that as well. Um, it's a really unique project. It was a really unique product, and I, yeah, I invite you all to explore it really today. I also wrote a blog entry about it. Also, we launched a blog this year. Um, there were a few contributors here. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we have content. It's a behind the scenes look. It's written by our staff, by our researchers, by our partners, people we funded, and anything relevant to the uh, Chicano community. Um, QR codes back there, CSRC posts, feel free to check it out. And with that, I will bring up one of our artists, um, PhD, PhD candidate here, Chicano Chicano Studies, a uh, friend and a great Instagram follow. about the portraits that you see to your left. Um, I'm left-handed, so I tend to do the opposite. Um, but I did want to talk about this from the heart, because I think you can read the blog post and read the academic part of my brain, tell you about why this is important and why you should care about these artists that are you know, there. 
but I think uh, from the heart, I, as an artist, I just wanted to do something uh, with my doctoral work that really reciprocated the relationships I have in community uh, with my peers. So I am a rare case where I'm an artist navigating academia. And I know there's not a lot of us out there, but there's a few focus for the locals, right? <laughs> and so uh, with that in mind, I had this whole skill set that I nurtured uh, in my other life and when I got to academia, it was difficult to find places for it to fit and for it to be nurtured and nourished. And so uh, my dissertation became this kind of challenge for me to really incorporate my artwork, but really incorporate the people that are in it. So uh, just really quickly to give you a gist of what the project's about, my dissertation, uh, it's really about the role of the artist in the 21st century. It's really about looking at how digital culture has changed the way that artists exhibit, produce, show you the process. Uh, we really have kind of the digital array of tools at our disposal as artists, and it's both bad and good. Uh, you can read the whole dissertation if you want to learn the cheese myth. But uh, I included some quotes below each portrait to really kind of give you a sense of who they are as people, as artists. Uh, I know all of them personally, and I've known them for years, most of them. But I think uh, the main thing I want to really impress on people about these portraits is that I didn't have to make them, <laughs> right? that oftentimes in academia, researchers, when they interview someone for their dissertation, the person ethically should get a gift card for their time, right? We usually uh, you know, compensate them for their time. And I wanted to do something that was more meaningful to both me and the people I was interacting with. Um, I really wanted to offer them flowers. And so if you're wondering about the title, I'll explain it. Uh, Give Us Our Flowers is both figurative and very real. Um, it's about giving each artist the flowers they deserve. And I took this from, um, I took inspiration from this trans artist who had a banner at the Trans Day of Remembrance in 2016 that said, give us our flowers before we die. And it was really about the, the way in which artists are often at the margins of society and are really economically about to <laughs> pass away, right? Because we tend to not think about their livelihood. And so the flowers that we're giving them, each portrait includes a flower that the artist chose themselves and that they feel represents them or they feel really close to. And so it's giving them flowers, obviously, but it's also kind of hopefully, you know, commanding the viewer to think about how many flowers do I give to artists in my life? Uh, I can click and share repost, but am I actually contributing to the artist's likelihood? And so that's something that I really wanted to leave uh, a mark with. So enjoy the portraits. Let me know if you want to talk about them more. I'll be around, but I'm, I'm an artist, so I'm shy. <laughs> uh, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Anielka and Michael and uh, Javiera. I uh, was informed in the back that I failed to mention the other artist's name, Salomon Huerta, yes. and his uh, portraits are over here that he did uh, and donated to the center. And you'll notice that several of the folks here are in the room, and even more of them, uh, we have their papers here, so you can continue research on them. So again, I want to encourage you to meet with Rosalio, meet with uh, Angelica, even though she's shy, and, and Salomon as well, and anyone else here, uh, Lupe, of course, uh, who's got a nice uh, portrait there. Um, and just engage. Um, that's what we're here for, and of course, it's always better if you do it over horchata and quesadillas with a little bit of rice and beans. So that's just down the hall and in the in the patio area, and um, just got to get through Reynaldo Macias, who's standing by the door, uh, <laughs> Dean of Chicano Studies. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for uh, coming here. It's been great. I do want to acknowledge actually Joy Holland, who's the new librarian at the American Indian Studies Center. And uh, been a great collaborator here with Dr. Fiala. And Javier, I just spent a few days at the American Indian uh, Library Association or with Almond. Very happy. So, a uh, lot of, oh, and Charlotte uh, Mueller here is also um, uh, here representing the Sal Castro papers and herself as well. Uh, and next week we've got uh, the Chicano, Youth Chicano Youth Leadership Conference. I'm going to be doing a speed dating uh, program for them in terms of uh, pitch, pitching for employment. So uh, another uh, great person here to engage with uh, in the room. So uh, join us all out in the patio and feel free to come back here. We have a conference room. You can't bring food in here, but there's a conference room uh, with uh, chairs and tables if you want to sit in there as well. So let's, let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
No, no. So I had this really amazing long summer, but now 